Uranus passed wind over three decades ago, and now NASA knows all about it. Writing in the Geophysical Research Letters, NASA says a review of Voyager 2's old data from 1986 showed that Uranus vented a giant blob of gas into space. This pocket of ionized gas, a plasma structure called plasmoid, was 400 kilometers across and 200 kilometers long. According to NASA's news release, Uranus is special in that it spins almost on its side like a pig on spit roast, while the axis of its magnetic field is offset from the spin by 60 degrees. This gives the planet's magnetic field an odd wobble that scientists cannot model. As solar winds blasted Uranus, the bombardment pinched gas off from the far end of the field. The resulting leak was then accidentally discovered by NASA researchers who were reviewing the old magnetic data. In the new research, scientists dialed up the reading's resolution to make a data point every two seconds. They spotted a blip in the readings that indicated the planet was making a plasmoid. It was just as well that Voyager 2 don't have a sense of smell, since Uranus contains a lot of aromatic stuff like ammonia and methane. Behavior that is shockingly undignified for a planet named after a Greek god. Want to find out more? Here's all there is to know about the Voyager's program, space, and yes, Uranus. In August and September 2017, NASA's Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft will mark their 40th anniversaries as space explorers. The two spacecraft are still sending data back to Earth and setting space exploration milestones despite their vast distance from our planet. The Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecraft were launched in 1977 to take advantage of an alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune that made it possible to use gravitational assists to explore the planets in a much shorter time. This alignment appears once every 175 years. Voyager 2 was launched earlier than Voyager 1. It is the only spacecraft to have conducted flybys of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Voyager 1 took a shorter but faster trajectory that used a gravity assist maneuver at Saturn to take it out of the solar system. In 2012, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to cross into interstellar space. It is still transmitting data at a distance of almost 13 billion miles away from Earth. Voyager 2 is in the space known as the Heliosheath, almost 11 million miles from Earth. That spacecraft is expected to enter interstellar space in the next few years. Each spacecraft carries a gold-plated record of sounds, pictures, and messages about Earth, just in case some intelligent ETs find them someday. Pluto's cold heart gives warm winds, lovely nitrogen-methane winds. According to a study in the Journal of Geophysical Research Planets, Pluto's frozen heart of nitrogen ice may be the main driver of the dwarf planet's winds. Pluto's heart-shaped Tombaugh Regio is a vast structure made of nitrogen ice, and its left lobe Sputnik Planitia contains 1,000 kilometers of ice sheet within its 5-kilometer basin. Phys.org reports that the study's authors used data from NASA's New Horizon mission in 2015 to construct a weather model for Pluto. During the day, a thin layer of the frozen nitrogen evaporates in relative heat. At night, the gas condenses and returns to icy form. The sequence pumps nitrogen wind through Pluto's atmosphere like rhythmic heartbeats. As nitrogen in Tombaugh Regio vaporizes in the north and freezes into ice in the south, the process triggers a westerly wind. Citing the study's authors, Phys.org says this behavior is unique in the entire solar system, with perhaps the exception of Neptune's moon Triton. The study's other discovery is that Sputnik Planitia's high cliffs trap winds within the basin before releasing the strengthened currents to the west. The atmospheric movement is similar to certain wind patterns on Earth, such as the Kuroshio in eastern Asia. U.S. NASA's Voyager 2 reached the edge of the solar system in early November. The two Voyagers were launched 42 years ago, but Voyager 2 took the longer route to interstellar space. Live Science reports that Voyager 2 detected a fiery plasma wall in the heliopause, where the sun's outward-blowing solar winds clash with cosmic rays. This barrier protects the solar system by repulsing and weakening cosmic rays. Citing NASA, Live Science reports that Voyager 1 could not detect the wall because its sensors malfunctioned. However, as Voyager 2 crosses the heliopause, it found holes in the protective shell and temperatures twice as high as past models predicted. According to the BBC, the sun's energies charge particles into an ionized plasma state and shoot them out to form solar winds and the heliopause. 
Live science reports that the solar winds play an important role in making the Earth habitable to life, despite the gaps Voyager 2 discovered. NASA will stop talking to Voyager 2 for almost a year. Starting early this month, Voyager 2 will stop receiving commands from NASA, the space agency announced in a news release on March 5th. This is because the transmitter that sends commands to Voyager 2, the DSS-43 radio antenna near Canberra, Australia, will undergo critical upgrades over the next 11 months. As Voyager 2 travels in space, the radio antenna won't be able to send commands to the space probe while it's being updated. The spacecraft is currently flying in a downward direction relative to our planet's orbital plane, which means it can only be in contact with the radio antenna site in Australia. During this time, the Voyager team will put the spacecraft into a state of inactivity, which will still allow the spacecraft to send back scientific data to the team during the next 11 months. NASA said in the news release that the radio antennas, transmitters and other parts need to be replaced and upgraded, as they are 40 years old and are increasingly unreliable. The DSS-43 antenna is part of the U.S. Space Agency's Deep Space Network, which is used to communicate and receive information from faraway spacecraft. NASA said the upgrades will also benefit future space missions such as the Artemis lunar missions and Mars 2020 rover mission. The upgrades on the DSS-43 radio antenna are expected to be complete by January of 2021. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.